Fusé. Hi everyone, it's Juliette, Juliette Okoku. Um, today we're going to talk about blood clot because it's been an issue that's been happening. Um, I've had a couple of people reached out to me about some of the signs and how do we know if um, I have blood clot, like how, like would knowing my family history help me and all of that. So I thought it's important to uh, discuss this, talk about it, and then you know, give you some of the tips that can help you, at least as warning signs. So if it does happen to you or a loved one, you know, um, to reach out um, to the medical emergency to get the help that you need um, before it's too late. So blood clot is a, it's a serious issue that needs to be talked about. Um, but of course, blood clot, now just to step back and explain um, what it means. So um, clotting is a process, it's a normal process um, in the human body. If we cut ourselves and we're bleeding, the clotting process is there to stop it so we don't bleed to death, right? So blood clot is like a, a gel-like substance that blocks the, um, the bleeding or blocks an injury. But blood clot can form even when there's no injury. That's when it's dangerous. Right, so if I cut myself, I expect the blood clot to stop the bleeding. But if I have not cut myself, I haven't injured myself, and I'm having blood clot, then that's serious because then it can block an artery, it can block a vein, and depending on where in the body that is blocking, can cause serious issues and sudden death. Right, so we'll talk about the different types of um, um, blood clots and where it blocks and what signs and symptoms that you should be uh, expected. Of course, just like anything else, uh, any other condition, you know, family history plays a role. Um, there are risk factors, so sometimes we don't know these risk factors, and that's also important to know. Some of the risk factors include prolonged immobility, so um, not uh, you know not moving for a very long time. So long flights, so people that travel, so sitting in a long flight can cause that bed rest. So those that have certain condition that puts them. Um, in a position of bed rest, so they're not able to move as much. It increases your risk. If you don't have any of this condition, but you're someone that does not do a lot of walking or are not as mobile as you're supposed to, it can also increase risk, right? So, you know, prolonged immobility is one of them. Surgery or trauma. So like I said, blood clot happens if there's injury. Um, but if someone has surgery, um, there's a higher chance of them um, getting blood clots, right? That's one of the, uh, some of the, um, risk factors so that's one smoking so if you're someone that smokes it increases your risk of getting uh, blood clot um, obesity so if you're uh, overweight or um, you know you according to your body max index like how how tall you are and how big you are this way that all determines if you can develop blood clot or not so being obese is, an, is a risk factor um, pregnancy when women are pregnancy they're pregnant sorry their chance of getting blood clots increase right um, hormone um, you know any kind of birth control that women take can increase your risk of um, uh, developing blood clot and of course genetic um, there's genetic disorders that can cause blood clot. So there's multiple reasons why someone will have blood clot, but at the end of the day, the most important thing is knowing what to do um, if you have the symptoms or knowing the symptoms, right, to prevent. Um, so if that happens, you know to seek medical attention, or if it happened to a loved one, you know that you can help them seek me medical attention because all of this is, um, is you know, could be treated um, pretty rapidly for a person not to lose their life, right? Depending on what's happening. So those are some of the risk factors of, um, um, you know, developing blood clots. Um, so what are the different types? So there's, um, depending on where the, the blood clot is happening will determine what symptoms you have. So there's deep vein thrombosis, DVT, which is um, a blood clot that happens in the deep vein in the legs, sometime in the arm, but usually in the legs, right? Um, so with that, because it's happening in the legs, usually there's like leg pain. So the calf of your leg, back of your leg, there's a sudden uh, pain there. Um, you know, either it's sudden or gradual. But usually it's not because you injured yourself or it's not, there's no explanation why you have the pain. So all of a sudden, if you're having pain in your calf area, um, if there's swelling of your feet, um, if there's warmth to touch and it's red or it's, it looks swollen, these are all signs that you could have um, 
you know deep vein thrombosis which is a blood clot blo blocking a deep artery or vein that's in the um, that's in the leg so it's very important it's a medical emergency you need to seek medical attention you go to the hospital go to your doctor they will give you um, there's multiple ways we'll talk about it that that can help you manage but the most important thing is if you do see these signs don't ignore it seek medical attention because it's better safe than sorry so that's the deep vein thrombosis and then there's the um, PE, which is pulmonary um, embolism. So that's the blood clot that blocks um, an artery that's um, supplying the lungs, right? So that's in the lungs. But because it's in the lungs and our lungs is what we need to breathe, there will be shortness of breath all of a sudden. Sometimes it's chest pain that's associated with it. In serious um, cases, the person can cough up blood. These are all signs that you can have a blood clot blocking something in your lungs and it's a very it's a medical emergency once again you need to seek medical attention right away because especially if we go through the systems of the body if anything respiratory will you know will um take you out quicker so if you're all of a sudden can't breathe all of all of a sudden you're having like you don't know um it's like a cough attack um your chest is hurting you don't feel well all over just make sure that you call 911 go to the emergency let it get taken care of because uh, once again there are uh, medication that can help you or procedures that can help get rid of um, the clot to help you live a healthy balanced life the third one is um, an artery or vein that blocks the supply to the brain or the heart so in a stroke or heart attack so if the blood clot block an artery that's you know supplying the brain there you go you stroke if you go, it blocks the artery that's supplying the heart, you have a heart attack. So these some some, uh, some of the symptoms, of course, if it's the brain, you're gonna have to, you know, it's massive headache. You, all of a sudden you can't see properly, um, like vision loss. Um, you feel like you're going to pass out, like feeling lightheaded. All of these are signs that there could be a blood clot. Once again, seek uh, medical attention. If it actually leads to stroke, the signs and symptoms of strokes is there, like we have one-sided weakness, difficulty speaking, drooping of the face. These are all signs that stroke is happening, blood clot is there, and we need to um, um, get you the help that you need. If it's happening in an artery that's blocking the, the heart, then once again, severe chest pain, right? Severe chest pain, back pain, especially for women, um, when they're experiencing heart attack, it's not the hallmark sign of like the chest pain. Some get back pain. So lower back pain or excruciating back pain, you feel you can't breathe, your heart is racing. These are all signs um, of could be blood clot leading to a heart attack, right? Having said all of this, there are when, when it, there are certain conditions that can cause similar symptoms. For example, panic attack, anxiety attack can lead can make you feel these symptoms like like you're stroking or having a heart heart attack. But it's better safe than sorry. It's always a good idea to check. Um, with your doctor to go into emergency. If it's a panic attack, there's a different way of managing it. If it's a heart attack or stroke, there's a different way of managing it, right? But either way, it can be life-threatening, so don't assume, get the help you need, better safe than sorry, okay? So these are some of the uh, signs and symptoms. So please be careful. Um, if you do have these signs, you need to follow up. Um, even if you don't go to the eMERGE right away, let's say um, you're someone that suffer from other condition, because there's, you know, people don't just have one thing. Usually there's multiple issues happening. So we can always say, oh, it's because of my regular back pain or arthritis. But these signs that I'm talking about are very sudden and it's very life-threatening. So when you're feeling that, please get the help that you need, right? Um, I urge you to pass this video around for to share with your family and friends so they know when to seek medical attention if these uh, signs are there right so, so some of the ways that we can manage this when you go to the hospital let's say you're having the symptoms you go to the hospital we're looking at where the clot is to um, trying to remove it dissolve it so then blood flow can could um, happen to you know all the vital organs that can help you live um live so if it's deep vein thrombosis sometimes surgery may be needed um procedures to remove the clot and then after that you be given certain medication to help keep your blood thin to prevent the clotting from happening again, right? Because remember, these are all genetic predisposition, um, you know, like hereditary. So that we don't choose our family, so we get what we get. But what we can do is knowing the signs and symptoms, the risk, and then also taking care of ourselves. So as I said earlier, being immobile is one of the uh, risk factors. Over Being overweight is one of the uh, risk factors, right? And then there are other ones. So to help that, 
maintaining your weight is very important if you feel like you're overweight you know try to maintain your weight or lose a little bit of weight will help you benefit not just for blood clot prevention but for all the overall health right so make sure that you're doing that um, healthy eating do your best to eat as healthy as you can um, if you smoke stop smoking because that automatically puts you at risk of uh, blood clot if you drink alcohol there's nothing wrong with it but just make sure you're drinking within the limits so you're not overdoing because too much of anything is not good for you um, alcohol can lead to uh, it's empty calories so it can lead to weight gain and once again being overweight is the risk factor of blood clot so making sure that you're taking care of yourself that way drink water that's the best fluid for your body 70 percent of your body needs it um, to cleanse and for other body functions so make sure that you're doing all these things this is a lifestyle management so it's not a quick fix um, if a family member or someone you know got blood clot and they survived best thing is make sure that you're you know they're taking care of themselves you know sleeping making sure they're sleeping reduce stress as much as you can um, exercise um, you know walking counts as exercise so make sure you're walking doing some kind of activity um, move more and sit less um, is the goal and then make sure that you're portion controlling your food so you're not overeating um, overeating leads to weight gain weight gain leads to increased risk of um, blood clot so uh, make sure that you're eating healthy what type of food you choose is also important you need to make sure that you don't want to um, you don't want to add too much of uh, fat um, in your diet so animal fat of course is the worst because leads to cholesterol there's different types of fat that helps lower cholesterol so anything that helps lower cholesterol uh, will help you lower your blood sugar will help you lower your blood pressure and in doing all of this will help prevent blood clots and all other chronic illnesses right so just make sure that you're doing your best to eat healthy balanced meal include plants uh, protein which is your your nut seeds um, lentils lagoons they're all good for you it has a lot of fiber helps lower cholesterol, improves your overall health. So try your best to live as balanced as you can. Um, I'm not saying you're not going to have, you know, your favorite foods or have a drink. All of that is part of life, part of living, but follow the 80-20 rule. So 80% of the time, you're doing your best to be healthy and follow a healthy lifestyle. And then you have the 20% to live how you want to, right? But be mindful of what you do. You have access to everything, but it's not all, all of it's not good for you. So. Blood clots is a serious issue. If you're someone that travels a lot, just be mindful, right? You can talk to your clinician, ask them what you can do, depending on your health, depending on your current health. Some people will put them on aspirin once a day as a, as a, a, a proactive way of managing. Doesn't mean you go to your, uh, your drugstore and start taking aspirin, that's not what I'm saying, but that's one of the things that you can do, but discuss it with your uh, clinician because they have your health history, they'll be able to advise you otherwise. Um, those that have had heart attack strokes or anything like that, you will be put on blood thinners to help right, um, your blood get a little bit thin so to prevent the clotting from happening too quickly. And that's also a way of managing. So if your doctor prescribed medication, please take them. Um, if you have questions, ask the questions, let them explain to you. Do not stop anything on your own without discussing it first because some of these medication is there to prevent future events, right? So um, it's not necessary like because you have high blood pressure, you're taking pressure medication, but because you've had a history of stroke or blood clot and all of that will put you on certain medication to keep your blood pressure low, keep sugar at bay to help you um, overall health. So don't stop anything without discussing it with your uh, family doctor and don't take anything if you don't know what it's for. Just make sure you ask questions because your health is very important and you have to be in charge of your health. That's why I do these videos to give you all the tips that you need so you can um, stay in charge of your health and live a healthy, balanced life. So until next time, blood clot is a serious issue. If you have all these sudden, sudden pains in your legs, in your calf, in your chest, you can't breathe, you have chest pain, you know, like you're having this massive headache that's not going away, please seek medical attention because it could be as a result of blood clot and we want to make sure that we are safe. So until next time, take care of yourself. If you have more questions, please send them my way. I'll make a video so we all benefit. Share, subscribe to my channel if you have not yet. Um, and you know, if you have any questions, I'm everywhere. You can reach me through my email. You can put the um, you know question in directly in my YouTube video uh, in the comment section. And I, this is how I compile all the questions, and then I'll answer it as it comes along. So take care of you and stay safe.
exclusive.